pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, July 19th, 2018. Adequate notice of this meeting, the Oldridge Township Zoning Board of Adjustment has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. For at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting, by privately posting in the municipal complex an announcement giving the time, the date, the location, and the agenda of this meeting. Also, by mailing such announcements to the Home News and Tribune. And finally, by filing a copy of such announcement with the municipal clerk. Mr. Sermon, can we have a roll, please? Mr. Connor? Here. Mr. Here. 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 Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. I know that um, right after the interview process, you had the um, you had the ability to meet Vina. I just want to take this opportunity to introduce her to our planning board and to those at home. Vina comes from us from Livingston Township um, up north, and she also had um, a, a career before that um, in the private sector. Um, she's worked on redevelopment plans, um, planning and zoning board review applications. Um, she has done quite a bit, and if I was to sort of uh, regurgitate what's in her uh, two-page resume, you, you'd all be pretty shocked. Um, so it, it's with pleasure that I sit next to Vina tonight, um, and, and hopefully for a very long time. Um, and it's, uh, it's been a pleasure over the last six weeks, and I think tonight you have a taste of a couple of her review meetings, uh, review uh, letters. So that'll give you a flavor of just the detail-oriented um, reviews that she does. So I just wanted to take this opportunity and say welcome to Vina. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and welcome. Welcome you. to the Township Council. Uh, on behalf of the board, uh, we, we, uh, we look forward to your guidance in, in, in the matters that come before us. Uh, we rely on the professionals, obviously, heavily for all the information that we couldn't possibly know that, uh, that uh, you professionals do, and we appreciate that guidance in any way that can help us. So, again, uh, welcome. Uh, brings us to uh, item number two on the uh, agenda this evening, it's resolutions. Uh, the first one is 5-18C, it's uh, uh, Leonidas Vestardis. <coughs> the application came before the board on May 3rd, 2018. The applicant uh, properly published notice. The applicant is the owner of a property uh, known as Block 18072, Lot 1 on the tax map of Old Ridge Township. He was represented at that hearing by Peter Clauser. He uh, applied for the following relief. The applicant was seeking approval to expand a one-story building to allow for a bedroom separate from the existing studio layout. Uh, the township LDO uh, does not permit single-family detached uh, dwelling units in the CN zone. The existing dwelling is a pre-existing, non-conforming use, therefore a D variance uh, would be required. And with the extension of the dwelling, the that habitable floor area appears to be uh, Appears to exceed the permitted FAR, uh, therefore G4 variance uh, would be sought. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, the proposed application required G4 as the max. 
above uh, while the uh, composed floor area ratio would have been 2.1, uh, 0.21, excuse me. The application uh, did not con uh, contemplate any C variances, and the board considered reports from uh, Ms. Shapiro, the township engineer, in reference to this matter. The board also uh, considered documents and plans comprising part of the record. That was a survey from uh, 2016, and a testimony by Mr. Vistardis, the owner of the property. Uh, it is uh, commonly known, and most of you recognize as the Old Bridge Diner, uh, which has a small family uh, home on the property. And uh, Mr. Vistardis indicated that that pre existed his ownership in 1993 and was utilized as a studio apartment. The expansion proposed to add 102 square foot to an existing 350 uh, square foot structure. Ms. Allison Coffin, uh, testified, professional planner, testified on behalf of the applicant. Uh, you know the property is in the CN zone where no residential units are permitted. The existing structure cons uh, constitutes a pre-existing non-conforming uh, use. According to Ms. Coffin, the net increase in floor area of 0.008% results in a de minimis increase in the floor area. Uh, the applicant did agree to comply with all recommendations contained in the memorandum from uh, Ms. Shapiro, the professional engineer, except as otherwise noted at the hearing. So no individuals testified during the public portion of the hearing. Uh, the zoning board taking that into account, uh, the proposed application for D1 and D4 use variance approval satisfies all of the concerns of the professional staff and promotes sound planning. Uh, we felt it would not have detrimental impact on the surrounding areas or the zone family ordinance, and it was consistent with the goals and the objectives of the master plan. So both prongs of the positive and negative criteria have been proven to support granting the use variance. And if, uh, uh, the uh, matter was, in fact, uh, approved at that meeting by the zoning board uh, with the following uh, recommendations. Shall comply with all recommendations of the township planner and engineer as contained in the reports to the extent that the aforesaid reports do not conflict with any other conditions contained herein and shall submit revised plans in accordance with the aforesaid reports. The applicant should comply with all restrictions made by or on behalf of the applicant <coughs> during the hearings. The applicant shall pay all taxes, fees, and required escrow deposits which may be due and owing. And the applicant shall secure any and all approvals, licenses, and permits required by the board, agency, or entity having jurisdiction over the subject application. That matter uh, was passed, and we are here this evening to uh, either uh, approve this resolution or deny it. I ask uh, any of the board members if they want to move it for approval. Motion, Walker. Second. Second on the, on the uh, resolution. Yes. 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 This evening is 4-18Z. It's PJAG LLC uh, slash Peter DePano. Uh, the matter was brought before the board also on May 3rd, 2018. Uh, PJAG Peter DePano here referred to as the applicant filed an application to the zoning board for property known as Block 105, uh, 10253, Lot 3.13 on the tax map of the township of Old Bishop. It's located at 144 Route 34. <coughs> Public hearing was held on March, uh, May 3rd. Uh, adequate notice was published in the newspaper. The zoning board considered uh, evidence and testimony on behalf of the application and made the following findings of fact. The applicant is the owner of the property and it's located in the EDO, or the Economic Development Opportunity Zone. The applicant was represented at that hearing by Peter Clauser, Esquire. And the applicant applied for the following relief. He seeks to modify a portion of the approximately six foot by one foot by eight foot existing monument sign from static to digital. The existing upper tenant sign, approximately four foot by a four foot ten inch by eight foot, identifying the business name and other relevant information and the stone based design are to remain. The applicant is proposing a modification of the lower portion of the sign, approximately one foot three inch by eight inch area, to be displayed as an electro a digital electronic messaging center known as an EMC cabinet containing information such as time, temperature, date, doctor's names, etc. 
The LDO, the township LDO, does not permit illuminated messaging boards or EMCs. Therefore, a devariance was required. Uh, board considered the following reports in connection with that. A memorandum from a township uh, engineer, uh, Nicole Shapiro, dated April 17, 2018. Board considered the following exhibits. Uh, final site plan, dated February 23, 2015, revised March 28, 2016 prepared by Center State Engineering. Also proposed signage detail prepared by Mark O'Light Sign Company, Inc. Finally, a photograph of an existing sign. Mr. Buffano testified on behalf of the applicant, indicated the dual sign will not blink, it will not flash, it will not scroll, and it will have a minute, one minute dwell time. The sign will only promote advertising on the site, amber alerts, time, and temperature. Um, Testifying on behalf of the applicant was Ms. Allison Coffin, professional planner. She described the site as approximately one acre with an existing medical use. Um, she found that no detriments to the surrounding area will arise. The usage of the sign for Amber Alerts and public service messages promotes public awareness <coughs> and the goals of the plan. The applicant agreed to apply, uh, comply with all the recommendations con contained in Ms. Shapiro's memo. No individuals testified during the public portion of the hearing. Uh, therefore, the uh, zoning board uh, determined relief could be granted and for the following reasons. It, there will be no detriment in, impact to the zone plan. It's consistent with goals and the objectives of the master plan. Both prongs of the negative and criteria have been proven to support granting the use and bulk variances. The applicant agreed to be bound by the conditions contained in this resolution. The applicant shall comply with recommendations of the township planner and engineer as contained in the reports submitted to the board to the extent the aforesaid reports do not conflict with any other condition contained herein. They shall submit revised plans and reports. <coughs> applicant shall comply with all representations made by or on behalf of the applicant during the hearing. The applicant shall pay all taxes, fees, and escrow, uh, required escrow deposits, which may be driven on. And of course, the applicant shall secure any and all approvals, licenses, permits, required by any other board, agency, or entity having jurisdiction over the subject application or over the subject property. Board, that's the resolution that was uh, heard on uh, May 3rd. I'd ask someone to move it. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Board members, uh, next matter on the agenda is uh, Lawrence B. Sachs. Uh, it's Premier Media LLC versus Township of uh, Oldbridge Zoning Board and Township of Oldbridge. Uh, this is civil action, acknowledgement of service, and additional fees. I have before me a resolution board uh, whereas Premier Media has filed a complaint from the New Jersey Superior Court of the New Jersey Middlesex County Law Division, civil action complaint action, civil action complaint action in lieu of prerogative writs concerning the application in the Zoning Board of Adjustment of Oldbridge and the Township of Oldbridge as defendant, bearing the caption Premier Media LLC versus Township versus Zoning Board of Adjustment and Township of Oldbridge, docket Middlesex L 006842-17, case track four actions in lieu of prerogative writs. And whereas there exists a need for the service of an attorney to represent the Zoning Board in the above matter, Whereas additional funds are or will be made available for this purpose, not to exceed $5,000. And whereas the local public contracts law required a resolution authorizing awarded contracts for professional services without competitive bidding, a bidding must be publicly advertised. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Zoning Board of Adjustment does hereby authorize $5,000 for Lawrence P. Sachs to represent the Zoning Board of Adjustment in the matter. We resolve that a copy of this resolution shall be published in the Home News and Tribune within 10 days after the, the adoption of this resolution. And uh, this is to certify the foregoing as a true copy of the resolution adopted by the Zoning Board of Adjustment of the Township of Oldbridge at its public meeting held on July 19, 2018, signed by John Dewhurst, Secretary, Zoning Board of Adjustment. Board members, I'd ask someone to move it. Motion, Walker. Moved in second for five thousand dollars for Mr. Lawrence B. Sachs. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 
I spoke, I, I, I spoke wrong there. It's up to, not to exceed $5,000. I don't want to say it's a blank for $5,000. It's approval. Uh, I approve. We have one completeness waiver. It's 18-18Z. Uh, it's under item number three on your agenda. 18-18Z, uh, Rickett of New Jersey, Inc. Gerald Sonneblick, Esquire, representing. I have the following letter board members addressed to the board. We represent Rickick of New Jersey in its application for a use variance to operate a florist at the vacant building that was formerly known as Kevin Court. The application was submitted requesting several completeness waivers. On June 12, the Zoning Board's professional planner reviewed the re uh, requested completeness waivers and approved all except items 2, 8, and 12, which were recommended to be pro provided and resubmitted for completeness. The applicant has reviewed June 12 memorandum and will comply with the recommendations of the professional planner Provide items 2, 8, and 12 as part of the completeness. Please accept this letter in lieu of our attendance at the July 19th meeting. That's authored by John Rensselaer for the firm. As we turn, we have uh, the memorandum dated uh, June 12th from Vina Sowet, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Thank you. Uh, professional planner. The reference uh, Rickick of New Jersey. Block 9000, Block 24. The applicant is requesting D variance relief in order to change the use of the property. The subject property consists of a single tax lot, Block 24, Block 9000. Block 24 and measures approximately 0.75 acre or 32,572.99 feet. Block 24 and measures approximately 0.75 acre or 32,572.99 feet in area. Square feet, right? I'm assuming that's what the site fronts on Route 9 and contains one building. A portion of the building is, is one story, while the remaining portion is two story. Our office has reviewed the waiver request by the applicant, Ricky from New Jersey. The applicant is requesting a number of completeness uh, waivers, and they are detailed. The following paragraph uh, continues that the applicant is seeking approval to use a portion of the building that is currently vacant, known as the, formerly the Pagan Court of uh, Pug as Polaris job. <coughs> the subject property is located fully within the OG2 zone, Office General Zone. The LDO, the Land Development Office, does not permit a florist in the OG2 zone, therefore devariance is required. These requests represent a total of 13 waivers relief from the various completeness checklists. The variance is sought by the applicant deals strictly with the use inside the building, and therefore, many of the waiver requests are valid since the exterior of the building, exterior of the site, the building footprint that is, building coverage, impervious coverage, storm the water, etc., will not be changed or impacted. The applicant should be advised that the waiving of any completeness items does not constitute approval of any portion of the application, and, and any information that will be necessary during the review process must be supplied. Okay. The waiver sought, we find that the following items should be completed in full and resubmitted. And those were items number two, which is site plan. Item number eight, key map at the scale of one inch to 800, square, uh, to 800 feet. And item 12, which is the schedule of required and provided uh, zoning bulk requirements. The board members having heard that, I'd ask someone to move for the uh, completeness waivers as the uh, planner has uh, noted that we would allow all except 2, 8, and 12. I'll move it. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Seven twenty eighteen 2018 board members, hopefully you've had a chance to review them. Absent any comments, additions, deletions, I'd ask someone to move it for memorialization. Mr. Oh. Stoner moves. There's second. A, there's a second by Mr. Connor. Roll call please as to June 12th. Uh, June, June 7th. Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. 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 
Hey, Master, June 21, 2018. Have some addition, uh, comments, additions, and deletions. I guess I want to move it for memorialization. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Stoner? Second, Walker. Second by Mr. Walker. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Item right, number five, continuances. There is one. It's 24 uh, 18Z, Timothy Cherico and Susan Shipman. Lot 26014, lot 294, located at 49 Central Avenue, where you have 28 by 32 by 19 pole barn. It's going to require a C variance that is in the R20 zone. The applicant is asking that matter be continued to August 2nd without further notice. Anyone here this evening on that matter, it will not be heard this evening. It will be scheduled on our agenda for August 2nd. And I have to sign that. Okay. You do not need this copy, correct? No. Okay. That would bring us to item number five, which is our applications for this evening. We have three. We're going to take them in the order that you see them on the agenda. <clears throat> I'll pull the first one, and it's 21-18Z, uh, this uh, Harnam Ratu, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name. It's six stone ridge road for an addition to the right side of a single family home. It's in the R12 zone. It's going to require C and D variants. testimony, I'd just like to identify who the three of you are. You are, sir? Her name is Ratu. You are the applicant, correct? Yeah. And you, sir? Son, uh, Anil Ratu. Okay, and? Uh, architect. You're the architect? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll spray you in. Sure. And, sir, you're not testifying? Uh, I am. Will he? Oh, he's going to be one of your witnesses. He's uh, a contractor. Oh, contractor. Okay. Uh, we see that this matters for an addition. What I'm going to do is, if you're going to talk, I'm going to have to swear each of you in. We'll get to the architect when, when he's going to discuss his matter. Would you please raise your right hand? I'm going to do it individually. Okay, sir, would you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this matter. So, if you got, okay, please state your name, spelling your names for the stenographer, and your address. H A R N A M. Last time it was two R A T T U, six Stone Ridge Road, Old Bridge, New Jersey, zip code zero eight eight five seven. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not working on this. Okay, I'll give them advice. I'm just, I was wondering. Uh, okay, sir, please raise your right hand. You swear the matter that the, the testimony you're going to give in this matter should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir. Yes. State your name and spell your last name and your uh, address. First, first name is Anil, A N I L. Last name Ratu, R A T T U. Six address is six Stone Ridge Road, Old Bridge, New Jersey, zero eight eight five seven. I have to give you the following uh, advice. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the, the rules of the zoning board are. The rules of the zoning board are that a, uh, in any kind of a devariance requires the use of a stenographer because that would be a permanent record that we would have of what takes place. You, however, can waive that right and go on and testify, or you cannot testify and hire someone. That would be totally up to you, because if for some reason your application was denied, there would be no permanent record for you to rely on to take it to a higher court. So that is up to you. I can't influence your opinion. I can only tell you that we require it, but if you want to waive the requirement, We'll allow you to do so. The architect might be able to help you out. Of it. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah, we we'll have a stenographer. You'll, you'll waive the. No, no, we'll we'll hire. Him. We'll take. Well, we'll, well, not hire, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll bring one. You're going to bring one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have to get a continuance. That means you can't be heard tonight. Yeah. That means you can't. The matter can't be heard tonight because because there is none available. And you have to plan to. I thought she was a. You know what? Then can we waive it, please? 
<laughs> that's, one way that we can I mean, one so we could have this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. Oh uh, yeah, he's asking. So let's see. So you understand what that means, right? Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, in this matter, you are going to have some various testimony, or are you going to take over as doing that? The owner, I want them to at least hear okay. the case first. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're going to do something to your property. Uh, right. You want to do something to your home. So why don't you, in your own words, what I'm going to ask you to do is tell the board what you're going to do, why you want to do this, how you're going to accomplish this, whatever it may be. I don't know yet what you're going to say. And then, of course, if you have any photographs or any kind of evidence that you want to have the board uh, look at, you're going to give that to Ms. Silverman. She would pass it to the board for review and to our professionals. So um, on the right side of the house, we're trying to do an addition for just a, 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 a bedroom, a bathroom, and a, a walk-in closet. Um, it would be six and a half feet, uh, 16, sorry, 16 and a half feet long and 31.2 wide. Um, the reason why we're doing this is for my mom. She's unable to uh, climb the stairs, so she's, because uh, she has knee problems, leg problems, so therefore we, we wanted to make the room downstairs at the first, first level floor. Um, and if you want uh, pictures, photos of, of the house or the... You already have this. This? Well, you, this I, is I the... That. You have that as well? Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a, that's the reason why we wanted to make the room downstairs. It has to do with your mother being unable to ascend and descend the uh, stairs? Yes. The stairs. And, uh, and then also my father. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, this is the main reason, yes. Uh, and I assume, sir, you're going to uh, tell us uh, what's going to be done now? Yes. Why don't you, why I swear you had, okay? You swear to the testimony in this matter to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Please state your name, your uh, professional affiliation, and uh, your address of your office. The address on Brian Road? Yes. 200 Brian Road. 200? Yes. And you are a licensed architect in yes. the state of New Jersey? Yes, sir. Would you, would you please present your credentials to me in some form? Yeah, I'm a licensed architect since 1987. I do have a license in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. I've been practicing in Wall Street since 2003. And we are Have you testified before zoning boards in the past? Sir? I guess he did. In, in name some of those towns. Uh, there was a Patel Brothers on Old Post Road. That's many years ago. Okay. I was, uh, I was the architect by the time. Okay. I will right, we'll accept your credentials. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. You may present your your case. Uh, I was contacted by Mr. Batsu, especially uh, the reason for this extension was Extension we did such a way that it would align with the existing house. Uh, uh, it will not look as a part of somebody added, it looks like part of a uh, house. Uh, we are in compliance with uh, the height. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of variances. Especially the, uh, the table. We are in compliance with the lot set. Uh, lot we required under 377 
there was pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, but this being a corner property, we have two projects, uh, Diamond being the in front. Uh, that the existing was 30 feet. Side here, we are okay. Uh, being 15 feet, we have 30 feet deep. Uh, the rear yard being the garage side, uh, the requirement was 45 feet, but the existing is 31.7, which is again existing. Uh, height, we are within the height of uh, 35 feet. Uh, we are extending a little bit of uh, FAR. We are, uh, Per minute is 0.21, we are at 0.23, so it's like 510 square feet more. Uh, uh, Basically, the <coughs> house was 0.200, now we need 27. Anything you want to speak about in support of the uh, in support of, uh, of the approval? I mean, you do have uh, you do have a couple issues to put on the record at least to uh, support why you think that the board should allow this by, by law. Looking at the condition of the uh, uh, Mrs. We'll speak to the professionals and we'll, we'll see uh, what they may add or may want to elicit from you, but uh, why don't we go uh, with Ms. Sawyer. Yes, um, so uh, the subject property is a corner lot and it abuts uh, Diamond Lane and Stone Ridge. The house fronts on Stone Ridge, but the way the ordinance is crafted, Diamond becomes the front, the uh, Stone Ridge becomes the side front. Uh, couple of things, I personally visited the property. I walked around just to get a feel of the area. Most of the houses in the neighborhood are consistent to the R12 standards. Um, the house meets the minimum lot area requirement. But one thing that was striking to me was when I was looking at Google imagery, I saw a lot of trash bags in the imagery. There, there were like 12 trash bags that, that just, uh, made me really curious, so I started researching, and I noticed that you operate a business uh, under the name Ratu LLC, correct? Oh, okay. Okay, that's 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 precisely what I wanted to know because I noticed that uh, the business had Six Stone Ridge Road as an uh, address, and I wanted to make sure that you don't operate a business out from there. Uh, the other thing I notice is uh, on your plans, there's an egress uh, staircase, and I think we spoke about it. There is a label which says egress staircase, although the elevation doesn't show it, but your plan sh uh, has it labeled. Can you pull up where you have the new where you have the new addition? Um, it is probably this window. Can you, uh, Kim? Can you go back to the floor plan? Yes. So uh, the rightmost corner of the addition, it says egress. Do you intend to have an e external door there? No, uh, it's any bedroom at this level, they require the egress window, which is the minimum size of that window. If it is Anderson, not gonna, they will go that window and the egress window, it's required by the side of the egress that's next, the egress window. Right, can you? 
Before you get final signatures, can you make sure it changes to egress window instead? And, uh, and um, the other, I think, one of the most important comment was you have an attic space added. So um, that's why the addition looks bigger. When I was walking around the neighborhood, they have like sunroo the sunrooms or uh, smaller additions. Is there a way for you to lower the roof, or do you really need the attic space for that bedroom? Uh, if you see, we ha we're matching the existing roof slope of the main house. That's how we want to get that. It, it's not being, it will not be used for anything else. It will not be finished. Uh, the reason we need access is, again, the required by code that we have to have access. Anytime you have attic, we need access to that attic space. That's all. That's all. Uh, and I, what he was saying, I think, is it's, it's Oh, it's an open space in, in the roof line just to match, but it's really only a one story, it's a one story livable area. Right. 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 Uh, the only other thing is I just want you to note that uh, the basement is currently unfinished. So uh, with the addition, you need a floor area ratio variance. However, when you come back and when you want to uh, finish your basement, you will have a much higher FAR. So I want you to be aware of that, and I want the board to know about it too. Do you have intentions of finishing the basement? That's all. You have the plans and you have far more adept at that. What would, would there be any room to, in height for another floor there? Even if, if it was contemplated? They're saying that it's, mm -hmm. that area is open. What's the, the higher on that second mm -hmm. floor? It's hardly five feet even. It's, it, nobody will be able to. I think it's more than five feet. It's more than five feet. It is definitely more than five feet because if you see on your elevation the uh, where the roof gutters are, you have it as nine feet, and the roof looks as equivalent to that. So um, the only reason I wanted to stress on it is because uh, if you look at the houses in the neighborhood, they are comparable to the size of house you have currently. So when you're adding something like this, you're adding bulk to it when you have a huge roof like that. If there was a way to lower the roof, um, I don't have a problem with the attic again. Um, it's not usable, it's just you have pulled down stairs to access it, but just so that the overall bulk on uh, the building would have a shrunk. So that was the only um, issue I had with uh, the roof. I think speak into the mic. If you look at the house, we're trying to match the existing slope of the main roof. And if I change the slope, I don't think it's going to look right. If you look at the side elevation uh, where the new extension is shown, and above that, we're trying to, the roof will be of the same slope. Uh, we'll make sure that that space will not be used for, uh, it's not a livable space, and I'm sure they'll make sure that they will not use for. I'm certain you won't use it for livable space, but I'm talking uh, in terms of aesthetics too. Is it possible for you to match the ridge line of the addition to the slope of the existing home so that it lowers by maybe like two feet? Mainly the aesthetic, you know, I can talk to them. If I can always provide alternate uh, elevations if that's required. But if, if the, cons I mean, again, this is just the top of the roof. If you minus the structure, plus we have to add a lot of insulation to this space because of the energy core requirements. Uh, by the time you do that, uh, even in the middle of the, the peak, uh, you don't have much of a room to even stand. Okay. 
So in the, so, uh, in the middle of the room, how much would you get at the attic level? I'm the sorry. clear height at, in the attic, how much would you get? In the livable space, in minimum required height is seven feet. Right. Clear height. Right. But there has to be at all the points. You can't just go at the peak of the roof and say, oh, if I have seven feet, doesn't mean that no. makes it livable space. That's correct. But uh, what I'm asking you is, the way you have proposed it, what will be the maximum height at the attic level inside, the clear height? I mean, I have to guess uh, it because I don't have a scale with me. But okay. It, it, at the peak, at the bottom of the, the, the rafters, could be five, five and a half. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Are you having any other witnesses who are going to testify? No. Okay. I'm going to go to the board members see if they have any questions. Sure. Oh. Yes. Am I right? Yeah, the feet from the. The feet from the uh, the end of the plan structure to the is that number of feet you gave is that to the sidewalk or the curb? I'm sorry. The number the the side going towards that uh, would be diamond. Yes. How many feet is that going to be towards? Uh, with the extension, it would be 17. Almost 17 feet. And that's the street. 11. To the From street? the property line to the face of new. Okay. Yes. That's what I have. 17.11. Anything else to say? Uh, let's go to the public on this matter before we go any further. This Z at Six Stone Ridge Road, and additionally the right side of the same town. Uh, anybody in the audience want to be heard in this matter? Please step forward. Uh, why don't you move over towards the middle, towards Miss Silverman, so you can. Uh, I can. Yeah. Yeah. The gentleman, just move over a little bit. Yes. Uh, okay, why don't you do Thank you. What is the word, young man? What is your name? My name is Mariana Sverdlov. S V E R D L O V. And first name is Mariana. M A R I A N A. S V like in Victor. E R D L O V. Sverdlov. I reside at 63 Diamond Lane. I'm here tonight to voice a strong objection to the plans for expansion submitted for the property at Six Stone Ridge Road. The basis for my objection is that the current residents of the property do not adhere to the noise ordinance of our township and continually undermine the quality of, the li of life of its residents. I can only imagine uh, to what degree the requested expansion will worsen the problem. Let me be more specific. The most recent incident occurred last Sunday. The incredible noise, music, children screaming, basically the very lively um, party that spills through the outside was coming from the property. My patients ran, uh, ran out around 1.20 a.m. At which time I contacted the police who appeared promptly and the noise finally stopped. It's not my usual habit uh, to call police unless there is a real emergency. However, in this case, it was only the only record that I had. My neighbors and I had to put up with the most uh, my neighbors and I had to put up with the most inconsiderate behavior for few years. We approached the residents directly to no avail. We have called the police. There is a record of this at the police precinct. 
The truth of the matter is that I find the law breaking and inconsiderate behavior of the residents of the property outrageous. Whether they know it or not, it affects the quality of life of the people in the neighborhood. For that reason, I urge the board to reject the expansion plan submitted by the residents, residents of this property. I'm just going to respond to you in a, in a, in a couple of ways. Uh, one, this board is uh, comprised of uh, local residents. We all live within in the township. We're all volunteers to do this. And uh, none of the members on this board are, are either a lawyer or a professional player or an architect or an engineer. We are, however, sworn to an oath to uphold the land use laws as, as described in the statutes in the state of New Jersey. There are also things that we don't have any jurisdiction over. And when you started to talk about the, the denial for the noise ordinances, uh, the noise coming out of the house, and the quality of life, unfortunately, that really isn't under the purview of this board. It is, however, under the purview of the police department, which you indeed call. So for us to weigh that factor would be unfairly in, out of balance to the applicant. If you were telling me something that because of, because I don't know what the size, if there was an extension put on, if there was an approval, I don't know what, whether you're saying that's going to increase noise or it's going to, it's. I assume, I assume, this. I assume. maybe I'm wrong, but I assume it's possible. Okay. It may or may not, I don't know either, but uh, that issue may be, this is a homeowners association here too, right? Sorry, it's Foxborough. Yes. Uh, that may be a matter for their homeowners association to address to their, to their residents, but unfortunately, those type of matters that the way you're describing them just don't come under the purview of this board. And I mean, I, I think the professionals would back up my, my layman's opinion uh, Ms. Shapiro, as a township engineer, you would, you would agree. I don't have none of the board members here have that uh, that right to do that to weigh that. Sure. So I, I'm empathetic to your situation, but unfortunately, I, I I can't put that into my judgment. If you said that it was, and I can't put words in your mouth, but it's too close to my neighbor's house and it's going to do something. Well, that might be something that that's a setback issue, and we may be able to take that into consideration. But the mere fact that they're creating some noise, if they are, allegedly you're, you're saying that they are, and apparently the police did go and I guess verify that, if I, you know, you're under oath and I assume you're telling me the truth. I'm sorry, but I just I just don't know how to explain it to you nicely that I, we can't consider that. Um, I, I, I'm empathetic to you as a neighbor, I, maybe I would be upset too, but um, that can't be part of our judgment, I'm sorry. Okay? Thank you very much for coming forward. Though. Is there anyone else in the, in the courtroom that's going to be to be heard on this back? I'm seeing none. I'm going to close the public portion. Mr. Uh, with lacking uh, our professional, uh, Mr. Sachs has been called away. He's going to be here momentarily. And as I said, none of us here are lawyers on this board. And our board attorney will be here momentarily, but I'm not going to wait. To, uh, and I'm going to move on this matter. Uh, that you think that they have not been on the record as far as uh, proving the, uh, the D4 floor area ratio. I, I didn't hear anything in support of the D4. Um, okay. Ms. Uh, Ms. What? I agree with Ms. Shapiro. I think they should just elaborate on why, uh, what is the hardship and uh, explain the positive and the negative criteria to seek for this uh, D4 use variance. Mr. Patel, you understand what, what Yeah, no, I understand. Maybe we could put something on the record, please. Yeah, the, the hardship is again the health of the person who is, who is, will be using this uh, house. Uh, I, I wish she was here, you know, she barely walk. We're, we're gonna take your word to run the road. Yes, it's, it's, yeah. They're telling us. And I, I would say that is, that is the strongest reason I would recommend that. Yeah, we are exceeding a little bit on the FAR, but we're not exceeding that much. Uh, unfortunately, this property has two corners, and some of the setbacks were already existing, and we can't change much of them, you know. The board's familiar with the fact that corners have, have two front yards in it, yes. in, in a sense, and, and so it's, it's, a it's a different standard. Yes. But, uh, and uh, what about, uh, do you feel that it's going, you said that, uh, I think you said something about you've configured this or you drew this, plans 
to conform with the rest of the neighborhood? Yes. So you think it would be in keeping with the other homes? Yes, of I course. I didn't get to visit this property. I'm sorry. I know yeah, it, once the house is done, it will definitely look is a part of the house. It will not look like somebody added to the house. You know. No, but I'm saying, is it consistent with the other homes? Yes. It looks in yes. The we, we are matching all the materials, uh, so it will be definitely consistent with the remaining homes, yes. Our plan, you, you, you agree with that? You said you did go, right? Yes, I did go and walk the uh, neighborhood. It is consistent. Mr. Mm Chairman, -hmm. and also in the... Uh, I, I was going to read it. Yes. Yes. Uh, before I ask the board members, I will put that in the record right now. Last part, the Village Town House Association uh, addressed it. Village board member has been given approval for a proposed extension at 6 Stone Ridge Road. Residence name is Tahara Ratu. This extension will be 16 foot by 5 foot wide by 31 foot 2 inches at the right side of the house. The front of the house will have a 2 to 3 by 4 to 6 inch high window, and the facade will have the brick finish to match with the front of the house. The right side will have two windows, size 3 to 4. Uh, and six inches at the bedroom, and three by three, two inches with tempered glass in the bathroom. And the new exterior will be the T111. We'll do plywood siding to match the existing siding layout. We'll have one bedroom, one bathroom, and a walk in closet. If any other information is needed from the Foxborough Village Association, you can call them at the following number, and that's authored by a board member named uh, Carolyn. Uh, unfortunately, she wrote over the top of this. I think it's no wind. Looks like N O N O I G U I N, I believe. But it's a, it's an authored letter by the association. So I just wanted the board members to know that the association has to be included. Now I'll go to my left. Any any final questions here? Yes, None on my right. Okay. Well, I, I think that board members, you know, we're we're rather familiar with uh, D fours, and usually they're in the basement, uh, and. I don't know if you guys paid attention, you, I mean, you guys, if you gentlemen paid attention that your basement is unfinished. And if you want to finish that, that triggers another variance. It's another D4 variance. So, well, I'm just giving you the, the warning that if you're going to do anything there, you still have to come back to this board again. And the, the, planner, the planner wanted to advise you of that. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think you put on the record uh, sufficient proof uh, at least to, to, to my understanding, uh, and uh, absent any objection. And while there was an objection, and we do take note of that, uh, as I explained, the board really can't weigh that into. I would hope that all people, um, I hope my neighbors are good to me, and I hope everyone else is nice to their neighbors as well, and I hope you are continue to continue to be nice. And perhaps it was a one-time incident, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to get into that, other than I think it would be nice if we both could get along, uh, because we all have our own homes and our own properties and our own lives, and we want that pursuit of that happiness. So I'm probably not going to stand against this. I probably will vote for this, okay? So would you want me to proceed with a vote? Okay. Yes. This, this will require, we have three, four, five, six, seven. It will require five of the seven members. This is a D variance. So if you fail, by not getting five positive votes, it will be dismissed, it will be denied. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to go through with a vote, correct? Okay. Uh, board members, this, this triggers a, uh, as you saw in the memorandum, a D4, floor area, uh, floor area ratio, and both variance is for the uh, pre-existing pre non-conforming setbacks, correct? Am I correct? There is one uh, front yard variance. Right. The Stone Ridge Road uh, variance is not required. Right, so there's one C, one C and one D4. Yes, one D4. Right. Okay. So if the D4 uh, fails, uh, we, we don't need to vote on the C. So uh, we will vote on the D4. Uh, does someone want to move the floor area ratio? It's going from 0 0.21 to 0 0.23. Motion. Approved? Approved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. That's in D4. Mr. Connor? Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. And board members would be uh, the C for the setback, correct? Setback on the C, someone want to move it? Motion, Walker. Is there a second? A second. Stoner seconds, roll call please. Yes. 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 Uh, it is nice when people build onto their homes rather than uh, leave the township. So we, we like that. Uh, I would ask you that you comply with all the rules. There won't be approval until next month because the, this is a uh, there's a D variance. So we're going to have to uh, write up a resolution for that. Okay? okay. You will have to obtain building permits, etc. Your architect will advise you as such. Yes. Thank you for coming in this evening. I appreciate it. Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Going, you're going to be on next. Do you have a? Would you just come forward for a second? Where would you? Uh, do you feel comfortable going on without Mr. Sachs? He is coming. Uh, if you, we could take a 10-minute break, if you'd like, it's up to you, sir. It's your application. Uh, if the board's comfortable, I'll go ahead. We can start. Okay. Board start. member, comfortable going forward? <coughs> and if you have no objection, then I will. So. Sure. Yeah, we might take a break halfway through. So we'll that anyway. yeah. All right, this is matter 12-18Z, uh, Fountains of Old Bridge, LLC. Uh, this is 3 Old Mill Road, or 75 age restricted townhouses. Three three-story buildings, clubhouse, pool, gazebo. This is an R20 zone. Uh, it's going to re obviously require a D variance. The applicant is being represented by Stephen Gowen, Esquire. Sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, real quick, uh, this is the Fountains at Old Bridge project. Uh, as Mr. Chairman indicated, this is 3 Old Mill Road. Um, it does, the property does have frontage on Mill Road, Spring Hill Road, and uh, New Jersey Route 34. Um, but the majority of the frontage, the frontage that we're going to be utilizing is along Spring Hill Road. Um, the property is 6.46 acres approximately and uh, mostly wooded now. Uh, with a couple um, structures, a single family home and a couple associated structures on the property that are going to be demolished. Um, some of, and then the property will be redeveloped or, or developed for the first time, I should say, with a 75 unit uh, age restricted inclusionary uh, residential project. So we are proposing that this meets uh, the 20% affordable housing set aside that would be required for this project. And it will be 100% age restricted, um, 75 townhome units. So uh, I don't want to go into a long introduction. I'll bring up Mr. Delaney, who can take you through the plan. Okay, I just want one matter I forgot to mention. It's, uh, I'm going to give you one hour because there is another application behind you. The, the, the board does uh, uh, adjourn at 10.30. So we'll give you one hour, and then in fairness, we'll give the second application an hour. Okay, sir? Okay. Well, I do swear to tell the truth in this matter. Are you swear the testimony in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, stuff again? I do. And for the record, please state your name. Uh, Sean Delaney, S E A N D E L A N Y, licensed professional engineer with the firm Bowman Consulting, located at 303 West Main Street in Freehold, New Jersey. Uh, you can briefly put your credentials. Uh, most of us probably know you, but just for the record. Certainly. Um, I have a Licensed in New Jersey as a professional engineer since 2003. I've been practicing uh, since graduating from uh, NGIT in 1999 with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. I've over 19 years, appeared before several boards, including this one on a previous application this year. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sean, could you please, uh, you know what, I should say at the outset, we did get three um, professional review letters that Sean will be working through with me tonight. One is dated July 5th, 2018 from Environmental Resolutions, Inc. Um, one is dated uh, July 11th, 2018 from the Environmental Commission. And one is dated July 17th, uh, 2018 from the Fire Marshal. Um, and I'll just say at the outset before Sean goes too much further that we can comply with all the recommendations in those review letters. Um, some of which will have to be deferred until we bring an application for site plan approval as this application is just for variance relief. 
um, but we can comply with the recommendations. So when Sean sits down, he'll walk you through the surrounding areas and uh, the proposal. Thank you, Steve. Um, the first exhibit I'm going to be uh, referring to is an aerial exhibit um, prepared by my office dated 7-16-2018. Mark that A1. It shows the property highlighted in the center um, with a uh, radius outside uh, just showing the location of the property um, in, ter in terms of the surroundings. Um, as Mr. Gohan pointed out, um, the site is identified as block 10253, lot 9.11, with frontage on Spring Hill Road to the south and New Jersey State Highway Route 34 and Old Mill Road to the north. Um, the site is 6.4 acres in area. It's an irregular shaped property, as you can see. Um, contains two, a two-story frame dwelling, a detached garage, and some sheds on, up on the Route 34 um, uh, Old Mill Road frontage that's been cleared with, with grass. And the rest of the site is um, predominantly wooded and undeveloped, a uh, mixture of uh, pine trees, oak and maple trees um, of various sizes throughout the property. Um, the site also has on the southern end along uh, Spring Hill Road a 100 foot wide JCPNL easement for some overhead transmission lines. The site slopes from Route 34 back towards Spring Hill Road. Um, as Mr. Gohan pointed out, it is zoned R20, um, and the, the proposed use uh, for the R20 zone permits single family and townhouses as provisions with some clustering. Um, the proposal is, uh, does not meet the definition of, the, of those uses, and therefore we're here for a use variance as well as some other D variances, which I'll point out uh, shortly. Surrounding uses to the north is Old Mill Road um, and Route 34 with the Cheese Quake Volunteer Fire Company and, and First Aid Squad and the elementary school across the street in the OG1 zone. To the east are three commercial lots that are um, offices, mostly all in the R20 zone, fronting on Route 34. To the west are single family, uh, two single family dwellings and a child care facility, um, also zoned R20, fronting on both Route uh, sorry, Oak Hill, uh, Old Mill Road and Spring Hill Road, while to the south, uh, some additional Single family residences across Spring Hill Road, also in the R20 zone. Go to the next slide, please. The next exhibit is a color rendering of the proposed uh, uh, use variance plan that was submitted as part of the application with some uh, landscaping added, prepared by my uh, office dated 7-16-2018. We'll mark that one just to, for clarification. We'll mark that A2. That's the colored rendering. Yes. Um, as Mr. Gohan pointed out, the proposal is for a 75 unit age restricted development, um, three buildings with 25 units in each building, three stories uh, total. Um, all the bedrooms, uh, regardless, uh, the bedrooms are proposed to be a two, all two bedroom units for the facilities outside of any co requirements. It requires ones and threes that we will comply with. Well, just real quick, um, because these are age-restricted, we will comply with the UHAC guidelines uh, for age-restricted units, uh, but because they are age-restricted, we are able to do all two bedrooms, so these will be all two bedroom. No threes. Okay. Go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, the units, the buildings are uh, aligned along the eastern and western property lines. Um, also proposed is a 2,600-square-foot clubhouse with a pool um, and associated deck areas uh, for the residents of the, uh, the development. Access to the site will be off of Spring Hill Road. It will be a 24-foot wide driveway that will uh, come through the property, um, allowing full turning movements in all directions. Um, site is accessible for both fire trucks and uh, garbage trucks for circulation. I'll show that shortly. Um, we're also providing 20-foot uh, wide fire lanes on the property, one behind each residential building. Um, access through on the western, sorry, the eastern bu two buildings through the center um, of those units and the southern side of the um, westerly building um, through the rear. Um, and there's also uh, the access to the, to the current property is off of uh, Route 34. Um, that access point will be closed. We are proposing a, um, an emergency access off of Old Mill Road. Um, for fire that will be gated and controlled um, in accordance with the uh, fire marshal's uh, comments in his review letter. 
Um, in addition, we're providing four trash enclosures on site to handle that. Um, it should be noted that the buildings, three stories in size, they will be sprinklered. They will have ele elevators involved for them. There are also garages associated with those facilities. There are 14 garages in each and driveways in each building. They're 25 units. So that means nine units will not have ac access or, or use of a garage. Um, they will not be all on the first floor or second floor. They'll be varied throughout there depending upon how the, the applicant breaks them up. Um, but in regards to parking, because they're all two bedroom units for a three story building, we required two parking spaces per unit for 150 total. The driveway and garage uh, combinations provides 84 spaces on the site. The remaining 66 spaces are provided in on-site parking, nine by 18 stalls scattered throughout the property. In addition, five handicap or ADA accessible spaces are required and we are providing those five on the property scattered as well. Um, there are several uh, variances that are required as part of the application. Um, actually, I'll get into those in a second. Um, with regards to the just general layout of the building, uh, the site and the improvements, not yet. Um, you know, grading, we're gonna follow the same patterns, the, the, the runoff uh, slopes from Route 34 down to Spring Hill Road. We try to maintain that. Um, utilities to the site, they are located out within Route 34 and Old Mill Road for water and sewer. They would have to be extended to the property. Um, had some preliminary discussions with the MUA on that. And uh, we will work with them should the application receive approval during the site plan phase of the project to extend those to the property. Um, in addition, electric, gas, telephone, cable, all those utilities are on overhead wires um, along 34 and Spring Hill Road and coordinate for the bringing those into the site. We are proposing a surface stormwater basin along uh, the southern end of the property uh, along Spring Hill Road. Um, we have provided a, a stormwater report that sizes that basin preliminarily based upon some assumptions on the property. Um, there are two inlets located in Spring Hill Road that we would connect into for the outfalls and discharging off site. Um, and we would provide the design for that will comply with all RSIS and stormwater management rate requirements for quantity, quality, and recharge um, requirements. Um, in addition to supply and uh, providing as many low impact development techniques um, as required as well. Um, we've also provided some landscaping uh, on the exhibit A2. Um, it should be noted there are 50 foot buffers along the residential lots uh, around uh, some of the perimeters of the site to the east. Um, it's an undeveloped site, it requires a 50 foot buffer. And then to the uh, west, the single family lot along Old Mill Road and the lot uh, in the corner up by um, along uh, Spring Hill Road also requires a 50 foot buffer as there are residentially uses and zoned. Um, the buffers 50 foot is tried to be held in cases where the fire lane has been proposed. It has been reduced um, to 20 feet, but we will provide uh, necessary additional buffering or um, infill um, landscaping to increase that buffer to provide necessary to those adjacent lots. It is noted that all those lots are heavily wooded except the lot on Old Mill Road, but there is a very tall 20 foot high uh, evergreen screen that exists right now. We are we would be providing additional screening on our site to enhance that even further beyond um, what's there. And then the only thing act impacting that property really is the pool and the in the clubhouse in that location. Um, the plan also identifies uh, two potential areas of wetlands. Um, we had a uh, an environmental scientist will go to the site, um, walk the property. Um, they did some evaluations of it and identified two areas that are that potentially could be um, wetlands on the site. Um, we are in the process of surveying those and, and would be submitting for any wetlands permits, LOIs, general permits to um, fill, uh, alter buffers, uh, what be needed to get it verified by the DEP. Once again, should the application uh, receive uh, approval tonight. Um, going back to the variances, um, and waivers that are requested. Uh, talked about the use variance uh, for the, for the uh, proposed buildings on site that's required. We also need a D4 FAR variance where 0.17 is permitted and we're proposing 0.1, uh, 0.41, a D5 density variance, 1.8 units per acre is permitted in the zone. We're providing 11.6 and a D6 height variance, 35 feet is permitted. And because we we're, we we're proposing a height that exceeds 10% of that, or uh, 38 and a half, more, more than 38 and a half feet at 40 feet, 
requires a D variance for that also. C variances, um, the height, again, two and a half stories permitted, three is uh, proposed. A landscape ratio of 55% uh, permitted. Um, we are proposing only 49%. Uh, parking setback to the buildings of 20 feet. We have 15 feet um, for those uh, surface parking spaces to the building. Uh, building separation wall to wall between the two buildings on the eastern side um, needs to be three times the height of the building, 120 feet. We are 60 feet. And the buffer to the residential undeveloped properties, as I mentioned, 50 feet is required with the fire lane in there where their buffer gets reduced to 20 feet. Still 50 feet of um, space between the buildings. We meet all the setbacks for the, the buildings and the location. Just the continuous buffer of 50 feet is, is not provided because of the fire lane. And then the, your engineers, uh, the engineering professional's letter pointed out a, a waiver for a parking stall size at 10 by 20. Um, for residential developments, RSIS allows 9 by 18. So uh, if we need the waiver, we're asking for the waiver, but I don't, th I don't think it's needed because RSIS, I believe, governs residential parking in this, in this case. Um, Oh, I'll go to the next exhibit, please. We'll just touch on that. That's what I was waiting for. We'll mark this as exhibit A3. A3. And this is a, uh, we, we did a, a circulation plan for fire trucks um, on the site to run it through the various, uh, in through the property, be able to circulate around as well as to get to the fire lanes at the rear of the site. Um, Based on the, the analysis we prepared that the fire truck can safely secure, uh, circulate the site um, without impacting any of the driveways, um, encroaching onto any of the, the, the curb lines or anything like that. We could provide more detail to your engineer for him to review uh, more closely um, if needed. Um, but we feel that the, uh, the facilities provided allows the circulation fairly. Obviously a garbage truck being smaller than a fire truck would be able to circulate as well, so we don't see any issues with circulation on the property. Um, and then if we go to the next, next three, we can put them all in a row. Um, we'll mark these uh, A4, A5, and A6. A6. Sean, could you just describe so we have for the record sure. what those are in order? Certainly. And if we go, which one is that? That's, so um, these are just, uh, um, obviously we didn't submit architectural plans because we haven't gotten to that point yet for um, the full design of the buildings. We have a footprint that we think fits for the property. Um, but it hasn't been fully, uh, the architect hasn't been retained yet to start looking at these. But the, uh, the applicant wanted to give a feel for what we think, what he thinks the, the building's gonna look like, um, types of architecture. Um, so the, the next three uh, plans are all examples of the type and style of architecture he would propose to use, uh, propose to implement on these buildings. Um, obviously very, you know, with the, the not making a flat roof residential apartment, but having a pitched roof. Um, different materials on the exterior of the building to separate <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, to draw some interest into it. Um, but these are, like I said, these are only examples right now. Obviously, if we received approval, we would come back with full architectural designs. But these are the intent of, of what the, the images uh, would hope to look like um, for this community. Okay, I, I don't really have anything further for Mr. Delaney if the board or the professionals have questions. I don't have any questions for Mr. Delaney uh, right now. I think he's gone through our letter pretty, uh, pretty methodically answering some of the testimony we'd requested, but we may have some questions a little later. Um, good. I'll bring up Mr. Kennel. I do. Yes. Scott Kennel, K E N N E L, with McDonough and Ray Associates, 1431 Lakewood Road, Manasquan. 
Uh, so I, I'm sure the board knows Mr. Kennel, but very briefly, Mr. Kennel, can you just explain your professional qualifications for the board? Yes. Um, I'm a principal with McDonough and Ray Associates. I have over 35 years of traffic and transportation planning experience. I've, I've testified in over 100 municipalities throughout the state many times before this board as well as the Old Bridge, Old Bridge Planning Board. And I've been qualified by the New Jersey Superior Court on three land use matters. Okay, very Thank good. Thank you. Scott, you wanna, do you want to start? Yes. Let's talk about traffic. Uh, my office prepared a traffic study dated April 18, 2018. That was submitted to the board. And as part of our initial uh, investigation, um, traffic conditions adjacent to the site and specifically on Spring Hill Road were inventoried. And that included uh, manual turning movement traffic counts at Spring Hill Road and Old Mill, Old Mill Road in uh, December of 2017. Those counts were done, conducted during the morning peak hours, seven to nine, and then four to six in the afternoon. Uh, the traffic volumes on Spring Hill Road are generally on the low side. I mean, during the morning peak hour, there's approximately 335 vehicles. The predominant movement is to the north for the commuter type activity towards Route 34. And in the afternoon, it's approximately 460 vehicles two-way with the predominant flow in the southbound direction. Again, they take counter to the morning um, traffic conditions. The next thing was to take into consideration the type of uh, use proposed here. And as was testified earlier, there are 75 age-restricted dwellings proposed for this site in three buildings. This type of use is generally uh, a low traffic generator. Uh, it's usually this age restricted. Uh, they're less traffic than non age restricted communities and dwellings. And this is particularly um, qualified by the fact that the residents are generally um, semi or fully retired, some work in part time, and many may work non traditional um, uh, work hours from nine to five. So as a result, um, their traffic generation for, as compared to a non-age restricted is significantly less. Uh, vehicle ownership is less. Um, and also on some of these dwellings, some, some of them are used as a second home. So part of the year they may not even be at the residence. Um, so taking that into consideration and reviewing data that's published by the Institute of Transportation Engineers, we've estimated that the morning peak hour, and again, it's a 60 minute period, would be 25 trips and then in the afternoon, 24 trips. Uh, this type of development on a 24-hour basis would generate approximately 320 trips, or 160 vehicles out, 160 vehicles in on a 24-hour basis. At that point, then, I developed uh, traffic projections. We considered a design year of 2022 as a reasonable time frame for when, um, if, if the use variance is granted tonight, for when the uh, project could then proceed with full engineered site plans, secure those approvals, and then construct and um, market the units. Uh, based on traffic growth data published by New Jersey Department of Transportation, Spring Hill Road uh, type of road in, in Middlesex County would have a 1% per year growth rate. However, to be the conservative, we used a growth rate of 2.5% to again be conservative and to consider any other developments that may be under consideration or recently approved in the area. Having developed those traffic volumes, then we surcharge the um, traffic to be generated by the 75 dwellings. And we assumed that for a traffic distribution standpoint, which took in consideration area roadway network, uh, location of employment centers, as well as shopping centers, we assigned approximately 60% of the traffic to the north of the uh, site access and 40% to the south. And with that taken into consideration, we evaluated the, the site driveway. And as, as you've heard testimony previously, we rated intersection from A to F, A being the best, C to D being the desirable um, threshold, whereas our analysis indicated that traffic leaving this site would operate level service B or an average delay of 11 seconds per vehicle. So it's, uh, it would operate at a very efficient manner. And as far as the left turns into the site, which would be southbound, that would operate a level service A. 
So generally speaking, the site access would operate at good levels of service, and that's attributed to the low traffic volumes that would be generated by this type of use and the lower volumes, you know, the low volumes we have on Spring Hill Road. Uh, as far as the use variance plan, I'll just uh, follow up on um, Mr. Delaney's testimony. Uh, the plan as presented provides positive circulation for not only passenger vehicles but large wheelbase vehicles. Uh, we're proposing 150 parking spaces. Based on my experience and uh, data collected nationally, the parking generation and demands for this type of use are much le less than age restricted. Uh, based on my experience, uh, I would expect that the peak demand, parking demand on site would be 100 to 110 vehicles. We're providing 150 parking spaces. Uh, this site has more than adequate parking uh, as it's currently um, constituted. Um, as far as the access, uh, in reviewing the residential site improvement standards, a one point of access for the number of units proposed satisfies their accessibility requirements. We've gone one step further by also providing an emergency access to Old Mill Road. So again, the access design for this site exceeds the requirements of the RSIS. And as far as uh, the access design and location on Spring Hill Road, there was a comment by your professionals as far as site distance. The um, location of the site access that the southerly portion of the property provides uh, in excess of 500 feet of site distance, which meets the requirements. However, as we develop the site plan and uh, Sean can, um, Mr. Delaney can refine this, the stormwater um, management system, uh, we'll look for every po possibility to shift that to access as far north as we can, again, to optimize and maximize the site distance. And really, the critical site distance is to the south. There's a vertical curve in the, uh, in the roadway south of the site. So in summary, uh, the tr this development, uh, as proposed, is um, will we'll generate approximately 25 peak hour trips. The site access will, will operate uh, at a good level of service. The, um, on this, the, the circulation on site provides, uh, accommodates passenger vehicles as well as emergency and refuse vehicles. And the site access, uh, in my opinion, will operate safely and efficiently. And that's all I have for Mr. Kennel. It's very thorough. So if the board or its professionals have any questions, otherwise we'll move on. Mr. Drummond's not here, correct? Mr. Drummond's not here this evening. Uh, we, we did uh, review. Uh, I don't have any questions for Mr. Kennel uh, directly at this time, but uh, uh, like, like we've talked about before on, on use variances, when it's just a use variance, um, a lot of the technical comments uh, really are reserved for the uh, site plan stage, but I'll, I'll address uh, some of that stuff uh, later on in the testimony. Okay. Yeah, as far as the... Uh number of apartments and they're going to be two bedroom apartments i understand for like age restricted uh living isn't there some demand for one bedroom apartments or well, that wouldn't be it wouldn't I mean, be considered would, in this yeah that's not under that's not part of my expertise uh again i, I just okay. provide a number of units and i develop you know traffic projections so, um i would defer that someone who was marketing right. or the applicant himself and as far as the uh, traffic study was the impact on Cottrell road taken into consideration because you got traffic from 34 as well as Spring Road going to meet at that intersection there. Again, the, we focused on the site access on the Spring Hill Road and the general rule of thumb is um, that if you have a use that generates an excess of 100 trips at a, a off-site location, then that would be, uh, be considered for analysis. Uh, whether we go to the north or south, we're going to be generating less than uh, 15 to 16 trips at any other off-site intersection based on our distribution. So based on the low traffic generation, it, it, off-site an analysis of off-site intersections uh, are, are not warranted. Okay, and I have one more question. As far as, uh, I don't know if it would be in your testimony, but as far as making a left turn to go down uh, towards Cottrell Road. 
it's kind of like a dangerous turn to make. Was that considered giving more time for the, the queue time for somebody to go? To make a left turn out of the site onto Sprint? Yes, again, as I mentioned, it's, we're, we're providing a one lane exit that accommodates left and right turns. And based on the analysis, the um, average vehicle delay would be 11 seconds per vehicle. So in other words, based on uh, the low volume exiting the site at uh, the development and the volumes on Spring Hill Road, this would operate at uh, excellent levels of service well um, above the design threshold that we, we uh, target of a level service C to D. Okay, thank you. Chairman, uh, what, just one thing I did want to clarify regarding the parking. Um, in our letter, we did uh, state that there was a, a deficiency, but uh, just a clarification that these units, although the applicant is referring to them as, as townhouses, that's really more of a marketing uh, thing than it is, you know, by definition, these are actually something that we would actually classify more as garden apartments. So. Just uh, wanted to clarify that, that the actual park, this development doesn't require a parking variance. There, there's 75 units which require two uh, parking spaces per unit. It's 150 and the applicant, at least on the, the plan that they've uh, presented, is providing 150 parking spaces. That's it for me. Yeah, let's bring up, uh, we'll bring up Mrs. Coffin to testify. Thank uh, you. Might as well power through, I suppose. Moving along. Yeah. Fine. Goodness gracious. Well, oh. <laughs> I would guess that we're probably not taking a vote tonight anyway, so there'll be subsequent meetings. Don't get to it. My first time up here either. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with this, and I'm saying I've never turned anybody from the public down, but at a certain time, we will cease for the meeting. So everyone will be heard, but may not be heard to the seat. I'm sorry? Okay. Uh, Mr. Oh, Chairman. I thank you for your suggestion, however. Let me get back, let me get back to the business at hand. Let me just take a one-minute pause. Sure. Okay, um, so Ms. Allison Coffin is going to testify as a professional planner. So Ms. Coffin, I know the board members all know Ms. Coffin, but you could you please, uh, first Mr. Chairman's gonna swear you, sorry. Or somewhere, right? Yes, I do. Allison Coffin, I work for James W. Higgins Associates out of Ocean Township, New Jersey. I'm a licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey, and I'm certified by the American Institute of Certified Planners. Okay, thank you. Uh, very thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Coffin, can you explain for the board the variances that we are requesting and the justifications for those variances? Yes. Um, the property that we're looking at tonight is an irregularly shaped 6.42 acre through lot that has frontage on Spring Hill Road and on Old Mill Road up at the intersection with Route 34. It's currently developed with a single family house and a number of assorted structures and all of this activity is located up at that intersection with Route 34 and the bulk of the lot is vacant and wooded. The applicant proposes to develop the site with 75 uh, unit age restricted, 55 and over housing all of which of the units will be two bedroom for sale units and some of these units will be affordable units. The proposed use is not permitted in the R20 zone, though there are other multifamily developments nearby in the R6 zone uh, where townhouses are permitted. The site plan provides for three three-story residential buildings, each with 25 townhouse or condo units in each, a clubhouse and a pool, Access is provided from Spring Hill Road for the residents with an emergency access driveway provided from Old Mill Road. The property is located in the R20 residential zone, which is intended to accommodate low and medium density suburban development. Apartments and townhouses and condos are not permitted in this zone. Therefore, the applicant is requesting a D1 variance for the use. And there's other D variants that results from this, this use on this site, and that includes a D4 for FAR, a D5 for density, and a D6 for height. The applicant's also requesting some other bulk variance relief, including minimum landscaping, 
uh, some distance between the building and the parking, and some buffers. It's my opinion that special reasons exist for the granting of the requested use variance and the other D variances, and that the site is particularly suited to the proposed use, and there is no significant detriment to the zone plan or the surrounding residential properties that would result from the granting of this bulk variance, or this use variance on this property. Uh, the particular suitability for the use. In this case, we have a surrounding area that has a mix of uses, including single-family residential to the south and west, offices to the east. There's some community uses in the area, including Cheesequake Elementary School and the Cheesequake Volunteer Fire Company, located right across the Route 34 intersection from the property. Uh, there's agricultural uses in the area, some greenhouses to the immediate east across Spring Hill Road and to the west. Um, commercial uses primarily along the Route 34 corridor, but there's also a daycare uh, along Spring Hill Road. There's multifamily uses in the area to the northwest fronting on Old Mill Road and Spring Hill Road and Route 34. And that includes the Spring Hill Village, which has a density of 9.6 dwelling units per acre approximately, and Madison Gardens that has a density that's over 15 dwelling units per acre. The subject site is itself a unique, a regularly shaped unique property that's larger a larger through lot with frontage on two roads. Uh, it has proximity to a fire station. And the proposed development allows, in this case, for an efficient use of this site while limiting site access along the Route 34 Old Mill Road intersection. Additionally, the proposed use provides for a type of housing, age-restricted uh, condos and townhouses, that meets the needs of a changing population. There's a growing need for the proposed use, not only in the township, but in the county as well as the state. Uh, more specifically, the general population is growing older uh, due to both the advent of baby boomers reaching the age of 55 and the recent advances in medicine and nutrition that have expanded the life expectancy of the general popu population. Consequently, not only are more people reaching the age of the golden years, uh, the 55 and over, uh, but more people are living longer than previously experienced by the general population. This is evidenced by some of the data that the state has put out, including that the nation's uh, older population will increase at an annual rate of 2.8% between the years of 2010 and 2030. Um, and the New Jersey Department of Labor projects that the 65 and over population will increase from 13.5% of the population in the state in 2010 to 19.9% .9 of the population in 2030. This indicates to me as a planner that there is a growing need for this type of housing. The proposed density and FAR are appropriate for multifamily uses as such as proposed. The ordinance has limits on FAR and density for the R20 zone that are intended as an appropriate control for single family development on a 20,000 square foot lot. It is not necessarily appropriate to apply those standards to a multifamily use. Uh, applying, rather, the board can use as a guide the standards that the ordinance does apply for multifamily uses consistent with what's being proposed. With regard to FAR, the ordinance has a limit of 0.17 for the R20 zone, and the applicant is proposing an FAR of 0.41. Where apartments are permitted uh, on six acre lots in the AR and AF zones, the limit is 0.3. So we're still a little over that. However, the proposed FAR of 0.41 is necessary to permit the project to be developed at a density that is appropriate for multifamily use and that takes us to density. The ordinance has a limit of 1.8 dwelling units per acre for the R20 zone, which is an appropriate standard for a single family home on a 20,000 square foot lot. Where apartments and multifamily development is permitted on six acre lots in the AR and the AF zones, the density is 14 dwelling units per acre. So therefore the proposed density of 11.6 is below what the ordinance anticipates for multifamily development indicates to me as a planner that the density that's being proposed for the use is reasonable and appropriate. The proposed height is the last D variance we're looking at, requesting a height of 40 feet, and in this case it makes sense uh, in the context of the proposed architecture. The height variance is created by the desire of the applicant to construct a pitched roof on the apartment buildings so that they have a more residential visual character. It would be possible to have a three-story structure that meets the 35-foot height if it's a flat roof structure. It's my opinion, though, that allowing for that extra height at the peak of the roof uh, allows for the pitched roof apartments, which provides a greater, a more desirable visual character for this area. Uh, we have some bulk variances that we're requesting, and they can be granted without detriment. I think the biggest of those is the minimum landscape area requirement. 
the 65% is required in the ordinance for the R20 zone, and we're requesting 49%. But the landscape area is appropriate for multifamily development, which, where it's permitted, has a limit of 0.45. So the 49% that we're proposing is greater than the 45% that the ordinance anticipates for this type of use. Uh, there's no substantial detriment that would result from the granting of the variances. The age-restricted multifamily use is appropriate for the site. It's compatible with the pattern of development in the surrounding area, which includes other multifamily developments. Uh, the FAR, the density, and the height are all appropriate for the mixed use, so they fall from that D1 use variance. And the landscaped area variance that we're requesting would have no detriment and is appropriate for a, a multifamily mixed use, a multifamily development. The variances would not, in this case, substantially impair the intent and purpose of your master plan and zoning ordinance. Though age-restricted multifamily use is not permitted in the zone, the use is in keeping with the mixed-use character of the area. It's also in keeping with the suburban residential character <coughs> that is intended for this zone. Okay, um, just one point of clarification. The um, minimum, the landscape ratio, uh, I believe 55% is required in the R20 zone and we are proposing 50.2%. Two percent. Sean testified to forty-nine percent. Yes. So I think there's been a reduction mm -hmm. from what we noticed for. Um, so we noticed for fifty point two, but we're actually um, we're asking for forty-nine percent. Um, so the um, that was just one point of clarification. I don't have anything else for Ms. Coffin. Uh, Mr. Kay? Uh, I think the, so. The need. The need. I mean, I think all of us are starting to feel old. I know I am. <laughs> um, and, and I, I think she makes a good case for, for the site suitability. Um, the one question I have, though, the bulk variances, and I know we're not doing bulk variances tonight, it's just use. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the buffer requirement for lots. Gosh, my eyes are bad now, too, right? Um, 9.13. I think Sean made clear that there's a uh, daycare center. 9.15 is a daycare center, right? But 9.13 is a, is a residence. And if you'll know from the plan, there's, there's going to be um, an encroachment into that 50-foot landscape buffer that's required. Again, they're going to have a, a um, fire lane put out there. So rather than have a, a, a real you know, landscape area, they're going to have to remove the trees to put down the, uh, the lane and, and you know, grading. So it's going to really encroach into that, that uh, buffer area. So that's, I think, Given that, I, I would caution the board. I mean, if you're going for a density variance tonight, I would caution for, for doing that. I mean, I think we have enough to move on, on the use. But for density, I mean, you might want to hold off on that until we get more details on the plan. So I spoke with uh, Mr. Delaney earlier today. I know the area is wooded. We don't really know what kind of woods, whether it's deciduous or if there's any evergreen trees in there, what kind of condition they're in. I mean, I, I do note that the house, the residence, is located pretty far from the property. Um, but I think we need more information on that. Um, and we pointed out to, to Sean, too, that uh, the other residents on uh, 9, 916 that fronts on Old Mill Road, they can provide the, uh, the, the, the uh, buffer for that area. You'll notice that there's a, a sidewalk that, that encroaches into it. I think we could probably relocate that. That, that shouldn't be a hard thing to do. And, and then they could fully comply with that, that buffer area there. So. Go for that D1, and this D1 is at 75 units. That I don't know that that's not an overbuild on the site. But yeah, that's no, a good point. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a force, please. Uh, so I, I may have my questions on that, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what, uh, how we're going to go here. And I want to obviously hear from the public. But I thank you for your comments. Mr. Darcy, can anything? I don't think I had think it was Ms. Coffin. Welcome. No, I'm not. No. Uh, I want to take five minutes. I want to consult with council, and then we're going to come right back. Probably, please don't leave the room because I don't even want to take five. Other than let the stenographer uh, perhaps go out to the ladies' room or stretch her legs, and then I'm going to consult with the township, uh, our attorney, and we'll get right back to business. We'll stand Like to call the meeting back to order?
Looks like everyone has returned to the courtroom. Ms. Silverman, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Connor. Here. Mr. Here. 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 Present. Mr. Cluio Klein is here. Good. We're continuing on matter number 12-18 uh, Z Fountains at uh, Old Bridge at 3 Old Mill Road. Uh, we've concluded with hearing testimony. We're going to go to the public portion on this matter right now. And I would ask all, anyone that is going to testify this evening, please come up to the uh, table here in front of the uh, dais. Uh, one at a time. I don't need everybody to come up at once. Um, I'll, call, I'll call you individually, and I would just ask that you not be repetitive in your commentary. So if somebody hit on one point, you bring up another point. And we're, we're going to be here to listen to all of you. Hopefully we'll get through this in uh, due course. Sir, please raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So you got Yes. Please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. Sir, it's Ralph Marin, M-A-R-R-O-N, 81 Spring Hill Road. It's just directly across the street from this proposal. Okay, sir. Please tell the board uh, what you would I, like I'd to like to ask the board if you're familiar with Spring Hill Road, if everyone on the board knows that road. Everybody here is a resident of Albridge and probably have been for many, many years. So okay, that's a two-lane road with no shoulder. It's already a dangerous road to drive on. There's numerous accidents there. I mean, I could count 10 at least in like the last couple of years at the corner of Old Mill and Spring Hill. This additional traffic will just make it extremely worse. Additionally, that school that's there, the daycare center that you called it, it's a school for autistic children. So I want people to keep that in mind as well. My home has a storm sewer in front of it and an easement on my property where all the water from the road flows through there. I've done so much improvements on my home to keep the water out of my basement. I can't imagine this is gonna make that situation better. It's only gonna be worse. I mean, frankly, I find this proposal laughable that they could consider putting this thing on Spring Hill Road. Make, and he brought up earlier making a left-hand turn out of that development will be a complete disaster. This residents on this block, they can't make a left-hand turn for several minutes coming out of that road. There's a little hill right in the middle that's extremely dangerous because you can't see beyond it. I mean, it, it, this is just ridiculous. That's my opinion. Thank you for your commentary, sir. <laughs> Who wants to be next? Okay. Ma'am, please raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you God. Yes, I do. All right, please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. It's Kathy Marin, M-A-R-R-O-N, 81 Spring Hill Road. Thank you. I also live directly across from this atrocity. Um, it's this, this property is going to devalue our property, our current homes. You guys made such a big stink. Um, the last family that was here that wanted to put up a home, you spent a lot of time on the poor guy's um, roof. All they wanted to do was match their roof, yet you don't see, um, what about our homes? Our homes are all single family homes, and these people want to put up a, th a three story structures, three buildings with three stories and a whole bunch of other stuff. Does not belong in our residential neighborhood. We moved here, lots of us, lots of us um, moved here to be in a residential farmland like community. Um, the greenhouse is more like a farm. It's, and then these guys are saying we have businesses near us. They're blocks away from us. These businesses are nowhere near our homes. We want to keep it a residential neighborhood. And like my husband said, it's a dangerous block to walk. When it's rush hour, I don't know where this gentleman got his traffic study from. It's, it's, it's full of hooey. He did it in December, maybe in the middle of a snowstorm. During rush hour, which is actually between the hours of 3 and 7, you can't, we can't get out of our driveways. It takes several minutes to get out. So I don't know what he's talking about. He needs to come back and do a better study because his study is incorrect. And like my husband said, there's, I don't mean to repeat, like you said, but there are accidents all over the place. Um, and I can go on, but I'm going to let other people talk. Thank you, ma'am.
Sir, please raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Help you, God. I do. All right. Please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. Name is Asbjorn Nyhus, N-Y-H-U-S. Uh, my address is 75 Spring Hill Road, directly across the street from appears to be the entrance uh, driveway to this uh, facility. Um, what is your first name, sir? I'm Asbjorn. A-S-B-J-O-R-N. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Um, my neighbors have uh, gone over the uh, traffic, obviously, which uh, I agree, adding 100 cars onto that narrow road, which is a 40-mile-an-hour speed limit road, very, very dangerous. I had, when we, I first moved here, my dog was killed on that road because traffic moves so fast and you can't see. There's a hill, very difficult for me to get out of my driveway. Um, can't tell you how many times I've had screeching tires and accidents. I've had cars into the telephone pole called Verizon. They've replaced the telephone pole in front of my house many times because it's been hit by cars, because the road is narrow and the cars are moving fast. Um, one of my biggest concerns with this is flooding. <coughs> Um, you're taking a wooded area which absorbs all the rain and you're paving over it or putting buildings on it. You're going to get all that flood water coming down the street, across the street, directly into my property. As it is now, I run three sump pumps in my basement just to keep my basement dry. Uh, that, that, that works now. I had to buy generators and backup generators to make sure my basement doesn't flood. Um, you're adding all this flood water in to a street that doesn't have sewers. There's no sewers on Spring Hill Road. We all have septic systems. You're going to flood out my septic systems. It's all going to run right into my leach field. Um, I'm looking at potentially tens of thousands of dollars to get all that re-engineered because this is going to add to, add, add, add to those problems. Okay. Um, this design that they showed on the screen here looks absolutely like nothing in our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is mostly split-level ranches. Older homes, my home is built in the 50s. There's nothing like that there. No three-story monstrosities, to be honest. It's going to destroy our property value. We are in a rural, people come to my house and they say, hey, this is like being in the country. So yeah, that's why we bought it, because it is like being in the country, but you have the convenience of being close to things. Well, you can take that away by putting this thing across the tree from me. That's my, 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 my biggest concerns there. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, please raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Help you got? Yes. Please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. 72 Spring Hill. And my name is Kelly Gonzalez. Last name is G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. So I will be right next door to uh, the driveway. So I am lot, I guess, on the diagram D. Um, basically, me and my husband, we, we know they're going to build no matter what. My issue is, is that, yes, the same thing. I'm going to repeat, unfortunately, what they said. That hump in the road, I am right there with that hump. I commute, I park in Jake Brown. To make that left out of my driveway is horrendous. There is not 11 seconds. I am there sometimes five minutes. My concern is, yes, I'm fine 55 and older, but you have to understand, as you get older, of course, your reaction time is slower. What are you gonna do with somebody who's living there who's 80, who doesn't have the ability to step on their gas that fast if they need to make a left? My concern is, adjusting where the entrance and exit is and also i mean i'm not looking to flat out any else anybody's property or anything with the catch basin those are our issues but we are right next door and i really want it to be not to them to receive the variance on like less landscaping because you know like they said they want to be well on wooded areas we want to keep it that way i don't want to you know here he already knows i've already expressed this I don't want to see this. I, more trees, the better. Since moving to our house, we're right next door. Our lot was already wooded. We planted over 70, some, it has to be like 75 evergreen trees right now to keep up with the area of keeping wooded. Because we built a pole barn and we respect our neighbors and respect that, they, that we built this on our property and they shouldn't have to stare at it. So it should be the same thing with this development. 
it should be properly landscaped so that these people, all of us as neighbors, we do not have to see this. You know, if they choose to keep it three stories, if you guys allow that, fine. If you provide enough landscaping so that everybody doesn't have to drive by and boom, that's what you see and it doesn't fit with our, you know, our area, then that's fine. But I hope you could take into consideration that, you know, the traffic and that hump in that road and the speed limit is 40. I mean, it's, it really is dangerous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, yeah, please raise your right hand, sir. I'll swear you in. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Up, you got? Absolutely. Okay. Please okay. state. Please um, state your well. Please okay. state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record. My name is Guy Smoldrin, 56 Spring Hill Road, Mattawan, New Jersey, which is Old Bridge, New Jersey, on that street. Now, can I ask you a question, sir? That entrance on the side on Old Mill Road is that going to be a key fob so they can come off of 34 and have their key fobs to come into that development? Was there a traffic study done of somebody coming across 34 onto into that development? You're saying that you're closing off that entrance. He's a he's he's the attorney for the applicant. Oh, so I'm please sorry. Please direct your commentary oh, I'm sorry. to the board. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. Okay. I thought he was the builder. I'm sorry. No, no, he's the attorney. Okay, so I want to know: Are they going to be able to have a key fob access from the 34? So now you have a firehouse, a school, buses, Old Mill Road, 34. These elderly people trying to get in there that ain't going to happen there's enough accidents on the corner of spring hill and old mill second of all there's a live spring or stream up on that property that they're calling wetlands where that runs down when it rains really really hard it comes down and it floods spring hill road you cannot cross spring hill road on the right side you have to go to the left side to cross spring hill road i don't know what they're calling wetlands but that ain't wetlands Okay, so what I feel that they're going to do is they're going to take that stream, put it into the retention pond, and after the retention pond gets full, they're going to dump it onto Spring Hill. Spring Hill can't handle it. Okay? The speeding on our street, I need to stipulate this because I've come to many council meetings about the speeding on our street. I've asked for signs from, from the township. They came out a couple times and put the signs. We had cars clocked at 100 miles an hour on Spring Hill Road. And you're going to put older citizens on this street? You can't even see the street due to the fact that the geographical way it's built, the street is designed. So it's just a shame that all these experts and stuff like that, they came over with all these traffic studies. Well, I don't believe to be it true because I can't get out in the morning and I'm out every morning. I go to church six days a week and I can't get out at six o'clock in the morning sometimes, which is wrong. I want to thank you. Thank you, sir. The right hand, I'll swear you. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, selfie God. I do, sir. All right, please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. My name is Steve Hess, H E S S. My address is 66 Spring Hill Road. The gentleman said, coming out of the proposed driveway, making a left turn will take about 11 seconds. My house is right on the crest of Spring Hill Road. It takes me three stages just to get out of my own driveway because you have to cautiously come out, look, look, go back and look, and try to get out. The point the gentleman made before, too, was the effect it's going to have on Spring Hill going down Trail Road because when Cottrell Road gets backed up, Spring Hill Road becomes a parking lot. And there's been many instances over the years where there's been problems, accidents, and the traffic was detoured off Route 9 onto Spring Hill Road. You can't even get out of your own driveway. And people then use your driveway as public property to turn around and get in and out. One second, sir. I'd ask you, please don't speak out. You're confusing the stenographer. She's trying to listen to the person testify. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. And, you know, so that, that issue, and when he's talking about, you know, so it's very difficult to get out. The other issue is what you brought up about overdevelopment of the area. We all have single family houses. We all bought those houses because extra property to be wooded in, to have some 
privacy and everything else. But now you're talking about putting 75 units in. And I'm sorry, my father lives in a senior community. They are more active than I am. They come in and out of their unit, day in, day out. And my father goes out, has a better social life than I do. He's out four times a week going to dinner with friends. So you're gonna have, and you're saying that you're gonna put 150 spots, but you only expect 100 to 110 cars. I find that very tough, tough to swallow because like, like I said, where my father lives and my mother used to live with him before she passed away, everyone had two cars. And the women went one way, the men went the other. So between that, the flooding, and the, the crest on that hill, which is very dangerous. Yeah, I've actually seen one guy go airborne in a pickup truck a few years ago and roll down the street. You know, and I just object to you know, what they've said. If they want to develop something fees a little less dramatic, fine. I understand people are getting older, but you're putting a three story, three three story buildings in an area that has nothing that high and it's going to impact traffic, school, everything else on that area. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Let me raise your right hand, I'll swear you in. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Please state your name, spelling your last name, address Carol for the record. Carolyn Smoljan, S-M-O-L-J-A-N, 56 Spring Hill Road. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Um, some of the things I want to bring up have already been brought up, but I'm getting bothered by the loss of the trees that we have over in that area. I mean, those trees are... are taking in all the water from the rain that we get and taking those trees out, we're now gonna have bigger issues with flooding on Spring Hill Road. And even with the retention pond, I question what's gonna happen with that because if you end up using that and it gets filled with water, we have standing water, now we're gonna have mosquito issues, okay? I already know about that because I have a small pond in my, uh, on my property that Middlesex County will come and check every so often just to make sure that either there's flowing water in it or it's empty set we can keep down on the, on the mosquito population um, again with the crest in the hill we are also at the top of that crest and I actually my husband and I actually put in a circle driveway a half circle driveway so that we can come out at the top of the hill from our property so that we could see both ways because if I come out at the lower part I can't see to the right of my house which is going north you you have to be able to see both sides of the street Otherwise, if you come out, you will get hit by a car. We've seen it. It's happened to my mother-in-law when she was still around. It's going to happen here because where these people are going to be coming out on Spearing Hill Road, they're not going to see the cars coming from the left, which is coming north from Cottrell. And also, again, when there's an accident on Route 9 and Route 9 gets all jammed up, we are the only access road that those people are coming, especially coming south at night, where they'll use Spring Hill Road instead of 34, and we can't even get into our own properties, and now you want to add this on top of it. That's a, that's a big problem. I've actually had to park my cars at the end of my driveway to stop people from using my driveway as a public access road so that they can turn around and go in a different direction. That's not fair to me. I paid for that driveway. My husband paid for the driveway, not the public. All right. But the, the safety on this road with this hill is probably the most important thing as well as the pooling of the water that we already have at that site after heavy rains. And then having to have that water then go across to my neighbor's yards, as he stated earlier. We also have um, an event that happens in October on that same property across from where this driveway is gonna be, the Haunted Walk. We already have enough problems because of the way Spring Hill Road is. We have plenty of uh, adults and children coming to the Haunted Walk. The great thing about the Haunted Walk is they uh, collect food for the food pantry. So they're not making any money doing it. It's all for charity. It's all to help other families. You put this in, I'm, I'm just waiting for the time that you're gonna get somebody who's gonna get hit by a car. And my fear is it's gonna be a child because there are plenty of children that go to that event in, in October. And if I'm correct, it's on a Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night in all the weekends in October. And if I'm wrong, they can correct me in the back. I don't wanna see anybody hurt, okay? Spring Hill Road has enough problems. We are county road, 40 miles an hour. We get 18 wheelers coming down our road, as well as the transit buses coming down our road, and that is why we're at 40 miles an hour. We had a traffic study done back in, 
I would say the early 90s by Bar uh, Mayor Fox at the time, um, because we were trying to get the speed limit lowered. It didn't happen. And I can tell you why, because they did their traffic study in the daytime when the speeding wasn't occurring to the extent that it does once rush hour traffic is over in the evening <clears throat> or during the day between the rush hour times. Okay. We're not a safe street and you really need to take that into account before we start putting 75 units up there. And on top of it, three story units, there's nothing in our immediate area. That's three stories. It's two stories or less. All right, the, the closest thing I could find to three stories anywhere near this was down uh, 34 uh, going towards Matawan, and you have a smaller development there of townhouses where it's three stories with the garage on the bottom and then two levels above. Okay, but that's the only thing I could find anywhere near us. We don't want this. I mean, if they want to develop it with lesser units, maybe not as big a unit, maybe that's something to consider. But the way it sits now, this is not the right thing for Spring Hill Road or the residents that live there now. Very much, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> ma'am, please raise your hand. I'll swear you in. Yes. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Help you, God? Yes, I do. Please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. My name is Julie Marin, M A R R O N, and I live at 81 Spring Hill Road, so I will live directly across from where this thing will be built. And I know that there's a lot of things that have been already touched upon, like the traffic, our road is unsafe, the flooding. But I, I also want to talk about how our streets only have two stop signs on either end of Spring Hill Road. One is a two-way and one is a one-way. So with all this extra traffic, only two stop signs, I think that's unrealistic. But also, to call this undeveloped land it's almost a bad connotation on it because it's not undeveloped land. It's land where wildlife live. There's a brown bear that lives on this land where they want to build. There's families of deer. There's wild turkeys. And there's even a feral cat colony that's protected by the Old Bridge Animal Shelter. They go in and they feed it and they take care of it. And they will be building directly on where all of these animals live. I see enough deer, raccoons, opossums on the side of our road already. I really don't want to see any more dead animal carcasses on my road. I have cats. Every, almost every other person on my street has a dog. And now we're going to have to keep them totally inside because of all the extra traffic that will be on our road. I also, it's, it was mentioned once, but this. Move back up oh, to I'm so sorry. Little, yeah, that, sorry. That's all you can make noise for them, not for me. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I also, it was touched upon, but this will be right up against a daycare center for special needs children. There is a sign on our street that says, caution, autistic children at play. The whole, the, the school is on the front of Spring Hill, and then all of the back is all fenced and gated where these children play. They have playgrounds, swing sets, they have fun buses that come there. And actually, honestly, several times there have uh, law enforcement has been called to that school because it is a special needs school and sometimes the children get upset. I don't re really need to think that we need to make them more upset by adding uh, extra people and extra sounds. And I just, I just think about these poor autistic children having to go to school every day and listening to this building, the sounds of all these trucks and and hammers all day. Who knows how long this is going to take to be built, if it gets built. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. I think this is the last person for the evening. Ma'am, please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Please state your name, spelling your last name, address for the record. Barbara Nyas, N-Y-H-U-S, 75 Spring Hill Road. Thank you. Well, I guess I, everything that needed to be said was said. I'm the one that runs the haunted woods along with my Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts. 
And honestly, if this gets built there, I doubt very much we'll be able to run it anymore. It's been run for about 20 years now. So, and I think we've supported the Old Bridge Food Bank a lot. Um, I moved here from Staten Island. I don't know if anybody's from Staten Island, but I moved here because <coughs> Staten Island used to have a lot of open space, but it was getting very crowded because builders would come along and they'd get a great big piece of property where there was one house. <coughs> They'd knock it down and they'd build yeah, 25, 50 houses. And that's the same thing that Old Bridge is gonna do. Is that really what you guys wanna let happen? You know, that's about all that you can say. Close the public portion for this evening. John? Uh, yeah, briefly. I, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I, you did say 9.30, so we're at 9.45. Are we going to... Mr. McGowan's not happy. Sure he's not. Um, <laughs> mind giving me 30 seconds? Go quick. ahead, sir. We'll stay on the record. Just to clarify, you're gonna, are you going to reopen the public portion if we come back for a second meeting is that what's yes, yes, because there's more to. people that have to testify okay so we're coming back regardless yep okay so if we're coming back regardless i'm not sure when the next meeting is going to be we can talk about that in a second um so obviously having heard some of the public comments uh, some of the things i think we did address in testimony um but we can certainly come back with further testimony to clarify some of those points i did just want to clarify one thing that i was asked a question about a key fob entrance on route 34 um, I don't think that's the intention. That's an emergency access road. That's what we're proposing there. So that's for fire trucks and things like that. So just to make that clear for everybody, um, that's not for the residents. And, um, you know, obviously things like stormwater traffic, um, you know, and some of the other comments that we heard, we can certainly address those um, when we come back before this board. I would like to say, though, that just to point out, um, you know, I think the board heard a lot of testimony from our professionals. Um, and that while the neighboring property owners may not um, appreciate the use that we're proposing, um, you know, our design professionals think that this is a well-designed plan. Our professional planner testified to the positive and negative criteria for the grant of the variance. Um, we believe this is an appropriate use for the site. We believe that it would be a um, important rateable for the township uh, and a use of property that is otherwise underutilized. Um, so we do feel like this would be a benefit to the township, notwithstanding the residents' concerns. And I would like to remind everybody, too, that this is a 55 and over project, not a unrestricted market rate project, which most of the concerns voiced by the objectors would be sub substantially, um, um, I can't find the right word, but they'd be worse. Um, a lot of the concerns would be worse <coughs> if it was a market rate project versus an age restricted. And again, um, being an inclusionary project, you know, that is really the need for the additional density. Um, the fact that it is age restricted, the fact that it is inclusionary, um, were all factors that weighed into the design that we have for you tonight. So uh, we will be back, I understand, but um, that's just my quick summation. Okay. Uh, please, let's keep our comments to ourselves. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give you another date then. How about September 6th? Okay. No further notice. Uh, folks that are here in the audience this evening, this matter is going to be continued. By that, we mean we're going to have another meeting in relation to this so there's not going to be any vote this evening by the, uh, this board for this application. The matter will be heard again September 6th. There will not be further notice, so please take note of that. September 6th, right here, same time, 7.30 start. I don't know what time the, the actual application will go on, but the meeting starts <coughs> at 7.30. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your lives to come in here. I know that your homes and your land is important to you. Everyone, as you heard me say earlier, here is a resident and homeowner in Old Bridge. And many of us have lived here most of our lives, some people their entire lives. So we are empathetic. We are also sworn by law to act uh, under the guides of the law. That's why there's an attorney sitting next to us, to make sure we don't run afoul of the law. So we listen to your comments, but not everything can be weighed at, at the same. If you heard me talking earlier in an earlier application about we can't apply 
some commentaries that people make because they're not appropriate to the application. All of your commentaries this evening were noted. The safety, the road, the flooding, uh, the uh, exiting that driveway. You have to understand when a, when a traffic when a traffic report comes in, it's based on how would I say it? Uh, studies that have generated um, repetitive uh, historical data. Historical data. Thank you. So when they say 11 seconds, they don't really mean that someone's going to sit there for 11 seconds. They may sit there for a minute, but in general, as a whole, when you average it out, that's how those things work. So the, the company that was here, I know that it, was, it may be hard for you to believe, it's McDonough and Ray Associates. They're professionals. They've been around a long time. Uh, you may impeach their, their comments, but the truth is they have to follow certain standards that are set down in guidelines. And so we have to listen to them as well. They don't make this stuff up because it's factual data that you can check. Uh, again, you people live there. The man who did it doesn't. He doesn't live there. I understand that. And we all understand that. And, and we also take into consideration uh, the homeowners and the fact that you have lived there and you know what happens there 24 hours a day. So we are going to, I, I closed the public portion for this evening. So uh, I, I, closed the pub, I closed the public portion for this evening. So we are going to continue this matter. I want you to remember it's September 6th. Please come back. You'll listen to any further testimony and or we're going to listen to any other comments that you have that evening. All right. Thank you all very much for coming out this evening. Mr. Gowen, thank you thank and your you. professionals for your presentation. Appreciate it. I needed you when I couldn't remember the word. You saved it. <laughs> Exacerbated is what I was trying to say. Two minutes? Okay. Guys, you have live microphones, okay? Hey, you have live microphones. You're on TV. You're on candid camera. <laughs> I'm just going to hold in place here for a minute. Uh, we're going to call the next application. Stenographer just has to make a little change to her equipment, I think. All right. Mr. McGowan, why don't you kind of start heading up? I, I said start heading up. Uh, uh, she just needs to fix something, and then we'll get underway. I do apologize. I did say it was going to go. You've been here before, and you understand how these I things go. go. I'm sorry, sir. I, I think we can actually move through in 45 minutes. Okay. So. We're going to get underway as soon as Debbie's ready. Ready. Okay. Well, now it's Kim. Okay. See, it's always something. <laughs> always Kim. Can I call it Kim or no? That just for Mr. No objectives for Mr. McGowan, I don't you want, think. Do huh? you want to bring any back? I should call <laughs> you in. Didn't get a chance to speak to I can bring some in if you'd like. Yes. <laughs> all right. That's, wow, it's nice. It's nice. Right. We are on TV, everyone. Okay, this is matter 10, uh, the final uh, uh, application for this evening. It's 10-18Z. This is Two Girls Waterworks Road. Uh, its location is block uh, 6017.11, lot 9, Old Waterworks Road for a concrete plant and improvements to the existing garage and office. This is in the SD3 zone. It's for preliminary and final major site plan with the variance. Robert McGowan is representing. Sir? Good evening. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Bob McGowan. I am representing the applicant in this matter. The applicant is seeking to locate a concrete batch plant uh, with administrative offices and an equipment repair garage uh, on this uh, site. Uh, to do so, it needs uh, D variants and it needs some C variances. We have with us uh, this evening the engineer, a planner, and a traffic engineer, and I would like to begin with their testimony as soon as you're prepared. Sir, please raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth's help you got? I do. Please state your name, spelling your last name, uh, professional affiliation for the sure. record. Uh, Brian Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y, uh, 1856 Route 9. I am a principal at FWH Associates in Tom's River. Uh, I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey. I've been before this board and about 100 boards throughout the state. I will accept you, Mr. Murphy. Thank you. 
Brian, would you uh, review for the board uh, what's involved with this application? Sure. How do we get the uh, aerial? Oh, Kim, we need you for some pictures. Get the aerial. <laughs> Uh, the aerial, um, up, uh, the fourth one up. Yeah. We'll identify this one as A1. This is, would you describe what sure. this is? A1 is basically a, a Google aerial shot of the property. Uh, the property is indicated in red, uh, roughly in the center of the center. Um, the property in question is block 603. 17.11 lot 9 it's consisting of 5.55 acres in the SD3 zone the special development zone uh, it's at the northwest corner of Cheesequake Road and Old Waterworks Road um, as you can see that the lot is elongated in shape uh, it's kind of a, an odd shape uh, we, we have two roads uh, binding two, two of the sides and we have a railroad on the roughly on the north side uh, of the property as well uh, running uh, along, along that end. Um, the existing use on this site is, is basically broken up into three contractor yards. So there's a uh, construction material and equipment uh, throughout the site. Uh, it's generally completely paved nearly. Um, there's not much of a buffer or green space uh, currently on the site. Um, yep. Sorry. Uh, the color exhibit, site plan exhibit. Yeah, I think probably that one. Nope, not that one. So, yeah, site plan exhibit improvements, number three. This would be Mark Day 2? Yes. Uh, there is an existing building on the southeast corner of the property. Uh, that will be utilized, uh, reutilized, uh, for an office uh, on the top floor. And the bottom floor will be a basic maintenance garage uh, solely for the purposes of, of the site uh, to keep the, uh, the trucks running. Um, the uh, proposed office or is 1,900 square feet. Uh, <laughs> So will be dedicated, uh, the rest of the site will be dedicated to basically a concrete plant. Uh, the light tan area roughly in the center is where basically the concrete plant itself would be. Uh, to the, along the north boundary is basically the bins where the raw, raw material will be uh, stored. Uh, the south area where you see the longer white stripes, uh, that would be where the concrete trucks will park. Uh, that's a 60 foot long uh, striped area, so basically we can go tr trucks end to end. Uh, when they park overnight. Uh, on the northeast corner, you have a parking lot that will be provided for employees. Uh, there's 23 uh, total spots, or, or 22 st spots, sorry. Uh, 14 is, are required, and then we have an additional 11 uh, uh, long, elongated stalls for, for the trucks. Uh, there's two accesses off of uh, Old Waterworks Road, uh, one more to the west and one, one to the east. Uh, that will provide basically circulation through the site so they'll come in one entrance, basically load up with concrete, continue on straight, and out, out the other entrance. Uh, keep a, a nice flow of circulation. Um, the, we're keeping the, uh, the existing building for two purposes. One, uh, for the obvious reason that, that it exists on site now, uh, so we can rehab it. The other reason is that to move it into the center to be conforming with the setbacks would basically destroy the, the, the flow of the site uh, because of the odd shape of the site. Uh, so, you know, the circulation of the trucks and also movement of all the materials basically to the concrete plant uh, w wouldn't really function with, with the, uh, if the office was conforming in the, in the middle of the site. Um, the detention basin that we'll be proposing is on the west side of the property. That's that large green area uh, on, on the uh, plan. Uh, we'll be providing an eight foot tall uh, chain link fence with slats in it. Uh, more of a security fence, but it'll also act as a buffer with the, with the solid slats through it. Uh, and that, that'll go completely around the, the property as well. Um, just go through, you know, the, the stormwater will be owned and maintained by, by the property owner. 
Uh, basically, the, the stone and sand is essentially moved over to, to the concrete plant when it's time. Uh, the only raw material that needs to kept, be, be kept dry is, this, is the cement, and that's brought in and basically put directly into the hopper, so that's enclosed uh, to keep it dry. And then basically, they're mixed.